You cannot yeah. fuck with kids. Like you can't fuck with cats. You can't fuck with kids. <laughs> This is the I Hate Porn podcast, and I'm with the legendary Book Angel. And um, <laughs> yeah, thanks so much for coming on. It's uh, really amazing <laughs> to have you. No way, dude. Thanks for having me. I love it. First off, I just love the title of the podcast. It's so great. Yeah, <laughs> yeah well, the plan didn't work, sadly. I didn't. <laughs> totally. <laughs> yeah. They ripped you down anyway, dude. <laughs> yeah. I swear I hate porn. <laughs> yeah, and it, it's so funny, like um, some porn stars I speak to that they come on and like, Oh, I didn't know it was called that. If I knew, I wouldn't have come on. I'm like, don't worry. It's, uh, we're not, you know, hardcore Christians or something. It's, yeah, uh, people are so crazy, man. You should also research what you're going on before you go on it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that might be, that's called doing your due diligence. Like, that's the problem with what's going on today, not just porn, but, you know, people don't research. They just see, you know, something there. And then they just take it at, to heart. And I'm like, but why? Why would you ever just believe anything, especially today on the internet? Why would you even just without doing some, you know, but I think it's laziness and, and just this thing that everything has to be fast now. Well, that's why I wanted you to come on, actually. There's this new Florida sex education mm -hmm. bill. Mm -hmm. And, you know, some people are calling it the don't say gay bill. Wow. And wow. Some people are saying... If you want to teach children about sex, then you're a pedophile. So, <laughs> <laughs> of course you are, right? Because <laughs> I mean, come on, those are two like totally different spaces, right? They're just always putting everything. At, you're a pedophile if you like talk to a child. Yeah, it's ridiculous. Yeah. So we've got like these two extremes. So like you always seem to be the voice of reason, so <laughs> which is kind of scary. <laughs> <laughs> but, but I read your Twitter and it's just like, yeah, that sounds right. <laughs> because I, you know why, my friend, I thank you for reading it, because I don't fucking care. What I care about is reality. And what I care about is people coming back down off this bullshit behavior that a lot of my community is doing and lying. That's deceitful, deceitful lying. I won't be, why would I ever do that? I don't need to lie about who I am and what I am. And that's why I'm very successful. I'm a biological mm -hmm. woman who transitioned to live as a man. You don't have a problem with mm -hmm. it. Most people don't. If you just come to the table with, with your honesty, right, then people respect you when you're honest. But I'm not going to be a part of some insane, deceitful space that trans women are women. What a bunch of bullshit. That, they're, they're trans women. <laughs> What's yeah. happening to everybody? They're like, yeah, my dog is actually my daughter. Like, what? <laughs> well, the, the other day, um, like, is it just a coincidence? But I, I matched with a girl on Tinder that identifies as a cat. And... When I told her my job, she she was the one that thought I was crazy. See, so was like, how insane <laughs> is that? It's it's actually like it's, <laughs> we are living in the most bizarre time, honestly. Yeah. I mean, it's going to end. There's no way it can stay at this insanity. It's going to crash. But that being said, I mean, I think we should never forget where we are because it's a huge learning lesson right now. It's 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 mm. for me, it's a huge lesson to show that when you see shit, that is happening, right? And you know in your gut that, wait a minute here, because I saw a lot of this shit coming five or so years ago, and I didn't stand up to it because I mm -hmm. didn't know that it would become what it is today. And that's not just trans, but just, you know, this woke shit and pushing people into spaces and calling everybody names and, you know, really free speech isn't on the platform anymore and you can't say. Mm -hmm. So I saw it coming, but I didn't stand up. And I think that's why now I stand up so hard. Because it's gotten so insane that I just cannot. I'm, I, I, I'm not. I'm, I have integrity. I really, you know, I really uh, uh, value my my where I where I am today and my integrity and my compassion, and empathy towards things. And I, I, I don't want the world to think all trans people have lost their shit because we haven't. No, absolutely not. I mean, I, I think. I mean, in the industry that we're in, we we know a lot of people with different kinds of sexuality, and most That's people right. are just normal people. It's, That's right. That's totally like, right, my friend. The whole world is yeah. actually normal. <laughs> yeah. It's real. <laughs> yeah. So this Florida law, what does this law do? And mm -hmm. what's the goal of it, really? Well, here's first off, I want to say this. It is, they're naming it the Don't Say Gay Bill. 
It's political, mm-hmm. obviously. You and I both know that. It's very obvious yeah, yeah, what yeah. they're doing. It has nothing to do with don't with saying gay. Zero, zero, zero. What it has to do with is teaching children from K, which is kindergarten here. I don't know over there. Uh, I think kindergarten yeah, how is old like. Would that be? God, I think that's maybe four or five. I think I can't. Mm-hmm. I have a nine-year-old son. I can't remember. What, but so he's in fourth grade at nine. But so okay. K kindergarten through third is the don't say gay bill, which means that you're not supposed to be teaching about LGBT, about uh, about gender, about sexuality, which is correct. As a transsexual okay. man who's been in the LGBT community for 30 plus years and has a nine-year-old son, I agree. I don't want my child going to school to learn this stuff. That's not what he's going to school for. Now, now at that age, you can actually mess with kids' brains. They're like so like open and you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Now, I'm not saying don't teach them that gay is bad because that's ridiculous. But at mm. that age, they're learning skills about reading. They're learning just how to walk the world. They're learning a lot of things that are very important, just, just how to be a, a, you know, a little person in the world. So when you start throwing things in that don't necessarily resonate with a lot of the world or what's going on, I think it confuses them, right? I heard my friend just told me the other day that this teacher is teaching kids in the classroom that there's no such thing as men and women. What? How can a teacher teach that? And this is kids that are like in fifth grade. And I, yeah. and I'm like thinking, well, there you go. That's why laws like this are now being put into, into this space because teachers are taking it upon themselves to teach what they feel is important to teach to these kids. It's interesting because normally you'd expect the education curriculum to That's be right. about things you do teach. That's right. Like you, you just put like, okay, we That's- should teach english and and, like you don't normally say like don't teach this that's right that's right so how did this come to to be is because teachers yeah i'm sorry yeah because teachers are taking it upon themselves and that's not a teacher that's something else you can't come into a classroom and have your own agenda in that classroom Mm. you cannot do that that's not what you're paid for now in a private school if you have a conversation or you're teaching at home that's different but us parents out here we actually have this idea that we want to teach our kids the way we want to teach our kids right so Mm -hmm. obviously i'm teaching my kid about lgbt stuff but there's some parents who don't that's not necessarily a bad thing that you have to respect where people come from and that they don't want mm. their child to know this, that that's disrespectful for you to say every child needs to know. I don't want my child to know certain things, but if they start forcing, let's just say I, I'm not a Christian, but let's just say they start forcing Christian uh, thought on my child in school. I'm not cool with that. And I'm going to raise mm-hmm. my hand and say, wait a minute here. Why are you teaching the Bible in the school? That's a public school, Right. So, so yeah. how is that any different than this? Don't say, don't say gay bill. Well, I did wonder about that. Um, like I've got, um, gay friends. Um, mm-hmm. I lived in Italy for a long time, actually. Mm-hmm. And in Italy, it's a very conservative culture. So yes. one of my friends, he's nearly 40 and he still lives his life in the closet. Oh. And I find that heartbreaking, you know? Yeah, um, it is. And, you know, I do wonder if, like the education that they're suggesting of teaching people about being gay mm. and that it's okay. Mm. Cause my understanding was that if you are gay, often, you know, from like a very young age, that's right. Like I don't have experience with it. And yep. um, like, maybe there's like a good intention behind it. Well, like maybe it's, yeah, I, I always, th- I always say that I always come to things as a, it's good intention. And I, I would assume that some of these teachers have good intention. In fact, probably all of them do. But the problem is, is that these are kindergarten through third. Now, if you're going to talk to me about uh, 13, 14 year olds, I do believe they should have some form of Mm. sex education and some not not gender ideology, but just some form of LGBT if they want to, not they Mm. have to. Right. So because we're not being taught. So so people will argue with me, especially in my community. Well, all they ever see is heterosexual. I said, but how do you know that? This is a teacher walking into a class saying, hey, I know I'm Miss Miss Sam. And so here's my deal. And we're going to teach today. But why does Miss Sam have to go into who she is? Why does she have to go into that? She's non-binary, that she's a trans person, that she's, you know, what what, what does that have to do with her teaching in the class? And so that yeah. that's where I think people are getting pissed because 
the, the, the fact is, it's not that I don't want these kids to know that because this is the future of the world and they need to know that LGBT is safe and it's okay and it's not bad. But I mm. doubt, I will highly doubt that a kindergarten through third grade is needing to deal with this right now. I, I would say most definitely as we move into uh, ages four, 13, 14, in, the, in high school, 100% in mm -hmm. high school. But it's the age that people are sort of, you know, that's what's, that's how manipulative the LGBT part of this community is becoming. They're manipulating it. They're mm -hmm. not being honest about what this bill is about and where it actually resides, which is in that very small space of K through third grade. Hmm. I, I was thinking about this. I was trying to think. Oh, it's so hard to think of. Like when I was that age, I don't have many memories. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> um, but one thing I do remember is that when I was young, we describe everything as gay. It was like <laughs> That's um, right. Yeah. It was just it was just like yeah. the slur. I don't even think we, we didn't even know what it meant. It was just That's right. That's the key. <laughs> That's the key so, to what you're saying right now. You didn't even know it was what it, what it meant. Yeah. Yeah. You're right. Yeah. So yeah. now you're going to teach a third grader. Well, when you say that and then, and then you say that's bad against gay people. And then what does he say? Well, what's a gay person? And then you have to say, well, it's a person who has same sex. Well, what does that mean? Say, and then you're li literally going into this whole, it's not going to be an easy conversation, I guess is what I'm trying to say. And it's not going to make the child understand because there's too many layers that deal with, you know, gayness. I think by the time they get to be 13 and 14, they can understand it or not. But this is really, these kids are being molded right now. They're, they're, they are actually being, you know, taught things that will take them into the future. And, and I don't think, I don't think um, homophobia is being taught in K through third grade. I just don't believe that's true. Okay. And cause I, I've seen like this been described as, um, like a groomer teacher, which is also a loaded yeah. phrase. But That's so true. <laughs> it's like, <laughs> it's oh, like God. Say, I mean, like, don't say gay bill um, and oh, groomer God. teacher. I mean, whoever comes ah. up with these things, they're like, they're marketing geniuses, aren't they? No, they are actually right on, dude. They're marketing geniuses it's, because that's all, yeah. all this is about. If, if we really just pull back all of us and we look at everything that's happening today, it's all based on money and control. It, it, it most definitely is. Uh, I, 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 there's no reason for my community to be so insane right now and to try to do the things that they're doing, which is re rewriting biology and, you know, telling us that we're all socially constructed and that cisgender and then naming people like you cisgender which is uh, dividing it is not coexisting when we start chopping everybody up into these spaces hey but at least i get a label that's, not <laughs> that's right dude. i have like 500 labels at this point <laughs> <laughs> yeah it's um but but on the groomer teacher thing do you think like it really is a a thing do you think it's that common or yeah. do you think we're just seeing like the extremes yeah. on tiktok say we're seeing extreme i do not believe that it's like a, a thing like a bunch of groomers are getting together and like let's groom all these kids i don't believe that and i also don't think that that's the actual intention of these kids grooming is a very I, if any of people out there don't understand what grooming is it's a it's a very very gnarly thing you're gro you 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 teach somebody or you control you it's a it's a controlling space to teach somebody how to be right so for for example gr grooming a child to be your lover you, you know what i mean like grooming a fucking five-year-old so that when they become you know that to become your boyfriend that happens that's an actual real thing so watch mm. out people out there when you start throwing that groomer word around because it is very very mm. very dangerous and i don't think that these teachers are actual groomers i think that they think what they're doing is right and i think because mm. we have um open the door. We've all let this happen. The wokeness, right? We've opened the door that they just feel like what they're doing is important for the cause, but they don't as teachers, that's actually not part of teaching. And so I think, um, teachers need to pull back a bit and understand what does it mean to be a teacher? And a teacher is a very important part of a child's life. And so when you start throwing all this other shit in there, you're confusing kids. K kids are supposed to go to school mm -hmm. to learn math, science, right? Social studies, how to interact in the world. But if the, if the kid raises their hand and says, well, um, mix Sue, right? MX, some of the teachers are why are you using MX? Now that, that is actually a, I think a, a question a teacher could answer in a very short sentence. It doesn't have to be elaborate. It doesn't have to be 
so, so, and if the teacher's going into that space using MX, she knows goddamn well that, that, that kid is going to ask what that means. So I don't yeah, think they're I mean, groomers. Yeah. I, I don't think that's their intention. I think their intention is to be trans rights. Trans are beautiful. And I think that they're sort of thinking on some level that a lot of these kids didn't, they didn't get the same opportunity that a lot of these kids got when they were younger. Right. And, you know, they didn't get to be mm. free to be who they wanted to be. Well, that's the thing. Has sex education changed um, mm. since like when we were young? Mm. Um, you know, here in America, they took sex education out of the school system for a while. I think that they brought it back wow. into high school. It's very dangerous. I'm all for sex ed, especially Same. now when we have the internet, dude. Kids are all over this phone on TikTok, like dancing all mm -hmm. sexy at 12. I'm like, ah, <laughs> I'm freaking out. Like, no. So, but that says to me, wait a minute here. We must start to talk about sex to these kids because they're going to do it anyway. So mm. there is a way that we can do it that's respectful. And also some parents aren't cool with it. We need to respect parents' choices. And we need to say, maybe send a paper home that says, are you cool with your kid learning sex ed today? And if you're not, we'll opt out of that and we'll put your kid over here while we teach the rest of the class. So th they're trying to take rights away from parents a lot, I think, see, especially here do in California. Think, mm, see, I've got two minds on this. Um, mm -hmm. I, I'm really blessed. I've got incredibly liberal parents. Um, like when I was eight years old, I spoke about sex to my parents because, you know, someone's older brother or something had said it. That's right. And they bought me like a cartoon book that just That's explained cool. like the mechanics of where babies come from. And, That's right. You know, they, they were always very open. But you know, because I had that experience, I kind of assumed that all parents are like that. Right. And um, like I did a podcast recently with, um, a porn star that's from Afghanistan. Mm -hmm. And she was explaining how in the conservative Muslim community, they deny the, the girls sex education um, as a way of controlling them. That's right. And, you know, that's right. That's where I get into this moral dilemma of mm -hmm. it's just science. And it's that's just, right. <laughs> <laughs> it's just science. And it's just like, um, <laughs> Like we can watch a nature documentary in the daytime with animals fucking. You That's know? right. And it's just like this is where you know. Snakes, That's right. Snake babies come from, but when it's humans, suddenly it's different. And yep. the idea that you know a parent might deny that to the child, maybe mm -hmm. sex education is a human right in some way. It is. I don't know. And it is. So I, I get. Yeah, you know, but... I, I believe in like parental rights and like yes. different ways of teaching. That's right. But some we do also have to try and affect the culture. So a hundred percent. I totally wants. hear you. Yeah. And I, I agree with you. There are going to be some parents who don't want any of that. They're like super hardcore religious. It doesn't fit into their space. It's a very difficult space because again, I'm a parent. So I couldn't imagine if the state took away my rights as a parent. And now the state basically can say that's dangerous. That is actually mm. dangerous behavior. When you start saying, well, do parents have the right over their kids? Uh, you know, I don't really consider myself I have the right over my child. I consider myself a person who has the um I have the honor and I have this sort of responsibility to bring up a child to be a great human being. That's how I come mm -hmm. to my parenting. Not that I own this child and you can't take no, 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 no. I I come to it and I think a lot of parents do, well, maybe here in California, where we want the best for our child. We don't want our mm -hmm. child to grow up, you know, totally fucked up. But at the same time, I think that there are there are rules and regulations for a reason. So so sex ed is important. It's a very difficult conversation to have. And so I do think age matters in this conversation. Mm -hmm. And I don't think a, a third grader necessarily needs to have sex education. But I do think at some point, maybe once they hit sixth grade or seventh grade, we need to start to have a conversation and just basic, right? right? These genitals, this is a vagina, this is a penis. Yeah. How old is sixth and seventh grade? Uh, so my child is in fourth grade at nine. So that's going to be 10, 11, like 12 years old, I think, something like that. Okay. 12, 13, when they're starting to have sex. They are starting mm. to have sex at that age. I mean, 13 year olds are, get yeah. pregnant all the time. Yeah. And uh, again, I thought about it so much. In the UK, we, um, at 11, we saw like a documentary about where babies come from. Um, yeah. I think the documentary was made in like the 60s or something. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Right, you know? um, and then 
when we were about 14, we were like putting condoms on test tubes and had embarrassed teachers. And that's so honestly, great. that was about it. It was, um, there wasn't too much, to be honest. It's, Whereas in the Netherlands, yeah. for example, they teach sex education from a very early age. That's right. From around seven, I believe. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, and I mean, they have a very open culture anyway. That's right. But they don't seem to have the divisive issues and. But that's also like the that. culture. Yeah. So you have to mm. remember those are all playing into, right? Our culture in America is a fucking mess. We, uh, the Netherlands is a whole other space. Even Europe is mm. a whole other space. America is a fucking mess. So the problem is we have state to state to state to state, right? We don't have one country overall. That's a bunch mm -hmm. of bullshit. Every state gets to pass a law. So if California passes the law for 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 some kind of space that Florida doesn't like, let's say we have the this bill here in in California, that's okay, but Florida doesn't. That's what causes the problems. So we're not all in alignment here, and right where mm. I think in the Netherlands people are in much more of alignment because they already started teaching that at such an early age, and they have less. We have so much shame in America around sex. We have shame around mm. our bodies, around sex, around you know and that's taught constantly here. And, and so, so it's not going to be that easy to just start teaching kindergartens about uh, kindergartners about sex, because we don't even have that as adults, as adults, we're already like, ah, ass. you know what I'm, you know what I'm saying? The, yeah, the, that, I, I know what you mean. Yeah. So like, it, in the UK, it's we're Puritan as well. Um, that's right. I feel you, I feel British people are very liberal, but the yeah. government and the laws are very conservative. Yeah, um, that's right. I feel my own sex education was pretty terrible, actually. Um, <laughs> like all of us. <laughs> yeah, and I, I think sex education should be different for men yeah, and women. I do. Yep. And it just yep. wasn't, really. Yeah, um, it should be. You're right. It should be two separate spaces so you know people mm. feel comfortable. So I was going to say the other night, my son came out, and he's like, he's like, hey, Dad, so, so why can't we show our penis and our butt? And I said, what do you mean? He's like, well, why can't I, why, why are we not allowed? And I was like, wow, what a cool question. And then yeah. his mom is like, you can take this one, dude. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm like, yeah, give it to me. So I'm like, well, here, let me just tell you, never be ashamed of your body, kiddo. Your body is totally fine. Everything is fine. Mm. But there's this issue that we have in this country. Other countries, you can, like Sweden, you can walk around naked. You can go places. Everybody's totally fine with it because your body is natural and it's totally fine. Mm -hmm. I said, but here in America, we've, come to this space where I think um, religion does play a part of it and that we've been told that our bodies are private and that's why they call it private parts. And, and I said, but at the same time, it's not, it's, it is okay to walk around naked. If you want to walk around naked in the house and you want to be like that, uh, we're all cool with that stuff, but it's outside in the world we're, because it's not consensual. And he said, well, what is that? I said, it means that other people might not want to see your penis. So it's not mm -hmm. okay for you to walk around with your penis out because some people might be uncomfortable. And he's like laughing, right? Like how kids laugh. And then, yeah, yeah. um, and I said, you get it? Like that's, he's like, oh, 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 okay. And I'm just like, look how easy that, <laughs> that was pretty fucking easy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and that's the thing. You, you're right. And you know your child best. That's well. right. So you that's know right. what way of teaching they respond to, you know, that's the right. problems they have, you that's right. Yes. So how can a teacher know that? Maybe what if it what if a child has high anxiety and you're starting to talk about sex and it like l literally throws them into a tizzy thing and freaks mm. them out? Like who's responsible for that? Am am I as a parent or are you the teacher who started talking about this shit that, you know, totally freaked them out? You know, it's it is I'm telling you we are talking about something that is so sort of such a difficult space to talk about because people don't want to talk about sex and kids because that becomes a whole other arena, right? We start pedophilia and all of this other shit that uh, we deal with when we're just trying to talk about something that's very natural. But I do mm. think there's an age limit unless you're at home and you want to do whatever you, you want to teach your child. But I think that you know, we have to understand schools are public unless you're sending them to a private school. And so we all have to get on board. All of us who are sending our kids mm. to public school have to sort of be on board with what's being taught. And the majority of the people didn't want the no say gay bill. So we live in a democracy. People forget that. We actually live in a democracy. Look at Russia right now. If you want to live like that, people go live over there. But we live in a democracy where we take votes and we we count them and we do that. And, and, the, and, and the majority of the people didn't want that bill. So 
what are we supposed to do? I think we need to go. We have to look at all of the layers of this, right? And if parents don't want it, we have to respect that. Mm. Do you think there's something bigger going on where, um, <laughs> like, um, where it's almost like the state and parents are mm. trying to decide who is actually responsible for the children? Yes, yes, yes. Especially in California, they are actually trying to take the rights of parents away and giving. They use that word agency. And again, you're going to give a thir- a thir- a three year old agency over themselves, like what? So that means that the child can say and do whatever they want, and you can't say anything as a parent. I'm like, that is the most insane thing. Like, I mean, I'm going to use the example of transitioning. So here we have this thing where like a, an eight year old can say I'm trans, and no one can push back on it, and then the eight year old could say I want to take puberty blockers, and nobody can push back on it. And I'm thinking, where are we headed? That is the most insane mm. slippery slope ever that, you know, again, parents are important in a child's life. Now, of course, there are bad, stupid, gross parents out there who do. But what is the percentage of those parents as opposed to parents who really give a shit about their kids and want to? They're I think that, small, you know, that's small. the thing people are not understanding. Parents want the best for their kids. People, listen, mm. p- parents aren't assholes and jerks. Of course, there's some, but the majority of parents only want their kids to grow up, to be a success, have a great life and move forward. That's really what parenting is all about. And, and people mm. are, are, people are misguided and also people are, are undermining parents. And that, that is not okay. It's not. Yeah. And sometimes I think it takes, um, like one argument I think is that it takes this kind of diverse pool of parenting to create a diverse pool of people like some yeah. of the best people i know yep. are so good because they had such shitty parents <laughs> that's is, true you know <laughs> like true. if they had good parents maybe they'd be dicks <laughs> <laughs> no like, you're actually it makes total sense <laughs> that makes total sense you know i always say like i suffered a lot in my life i'm 59 <laughs> years old right i i had a lot of shit in the 60s and 70s that these kids will never deal mm-hmm. with and and now i look i hated it when it was happening but now i look back on it and i'm thinking my suffering made me this dude you know my suffering mm-hmm. made me want to stand up and speak when i feel like i need to so you're right on some level like you know is there a right way to parent or a wrong way to parent I, i'm not sure people would think the way we parent our child is disgusting he's got blue hair and it's long and he's like a wolf child. And you know what I mean? Like, so yep. what? We're totally cool with that. And that's how we want our kid to have independent thinking. So, but a lot of other parents would be mortified at the way we sort of raise our child, but then who's, who, who can tell us otherwise, right? That's what I'm trying mm-hmm. to say. I guess who has the right to parent is the person who brought the child in the world. Do I own that child? No, I don't own him. But what I do is I have a responsibility for him. And I think that people mm. think parents own kids. We don't own our kids. We, we, we have responsibility until they're 18 to like sort of make sure that they're guided in a really great way. Yeah, I, I think that this is just always going to be a battle, isn't it? Um, yes. In the yes. UK, I feel that we often go too far the other way of trying mm-hmm. not to offend people. Mm-hmm. Um, and then we end up with a situation where maybe an abused child dies, you know? Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. And then we go too far the other way and we're taking children away from parents because of their That's political right. beliefs or something like that. That's and right. And it, it's very hard to find this middle ground. Um, That's right. Like, Do you think if parents are denying their children sex education, that there's a point where the school should step in and teach them? You, you know, think? that's so, so, so that's a great question to be honest with you. But, but at the same time here, is sex education that important to take a child away from a family? I don't think so because I think it's Maybe more important away from a family, but, 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 but to teach, in like a to override, right. Yeah. To override the parent. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, that's a great question. And I would have to most, uh, I, again, age. So it's the age to me. If the mm-hmm. child is 13, 14 and The school feels it's very important for them to, I I kind of think on some level you could say, well, if you want your child to go to the school, then they're going to have to take this course. But if not, you're going to have to find another school. We could do something to that effect because I do think sex education is hugely important, especially in this country when we're, 
we're denying this sort of idea of sex, but then all these kids are getting pregnant. It's obvious what's going on, right? So when you don't understand your body and you stick your penis into a vagina and then you make a baby, but you didn't realize that that was going to happen, whose fault is that? Is it the adult's fault for not saying? And on some level, it is our fault because we didn't say, well, when you stick your penis into that thing, it's going to make a baby. Then, then, so yeah, it's, you remember again, it's age appropriate for me. I, I feel like it's age appropriate, but I also think that you're right. If a parent isn't teaching that, is it our responsibility to step in on that? And that, that again, it, because now we have to find that, that space there. So it could be public yeah. school. We could say, if you don't want your child to do that, either you opt out or you're going to have to find another school oh, to go to. Sorry. I just um, lost you a little bit. Oh shit. It's my can internet. Can, yeah, I can hear you. Can you hear me? Sorry. It's my connection. It's shitty here. <laughs> it's America. Where, where I'm in Los that? Angeles. It's a mess here, dude. Oh my God. The homeless out of control, out of control. I love LA. Uh, I, I'm born and raised here, but I lived in Mexico for 10 years and that was a great experience, but I'm back here and it's been amazing for me. And, um, but, but I can tell you that it's a mess. California is a mess. Our, our, our governing mm. government, all of it. It's just, it's gotten too woke and you know, I'm all about, I'm a liberal. I'm a hundred percent a liberal, but you know, I'm not that kind of liberal that, that that's doing something else that I, I, I just can't align myself with. Mm. Yeah. Well, it, it's the woke stuff is not very liberal. That's the problem. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Dude. No, you're actually right. I don't even know why they put it in the liberal space. It's something else, dude. It's fascism. Yeah. yeah it's like, you must do this and think like this or you're evil. But yeah, we're so woke. Side, yeah, <laughs> well, the other side do the same with um, like that's say, true. Calling them groomer teachers and do they call me a groomer. Really? No, they. Yes, I've been called a groomer constantly by these gender critical women, these feminist women who hate fucking everybody. And um, so yeah, they call me a she, and then they call me a groomer because I do porn and you know and like blah blah blah. So I'm like, you better watch yourself mm-hmm. when you you're an idiot. You're you're actually putting people towards me when the real groomers are over here. So all you're doing is diverting the attention from the real groomers, you fucking morons. And that that's yeah. what pisses me off. I, I can take anything. Mm. If you know me, I can take every punch. I've learned to really roll with the punches. It doesn't matter to me because the truth always wins. But when you start, you know, doing that kind of stuff, you are doing a disservice to us and to the actual, you know, you're really letting the groomers groom on some level. Mm. Yeah. And <laughs> I think sex education on the right in America used to be bad. Like, do they still teach abstinence? Is that, you know, that's a great um, question. I I don't, I don't, I told you they took sex ed out of schools, which was so shocking, Mm. but I think they brought it back. And I, 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 I'm not really sure if that's a great question. I'm going to find that out for you because uh, I've got a little video clip. I wanted to play you. Totally. Um, Hopefully you can see my screen, but I found um, a sex education class from, um the 90s i believe <laughs> uh i don't think it's gonna let me oh, send damn. you it i can imagine it's like because you know i was in uh let's see i think i was taught those movies when i was in sixth grade and that was like in the 70s and i'll never forget they put us both together boys and girls and it was so uncomfortable when we talked about our period and you know boners and <laughs> vaginas mm-hmm. and <laughs> and wow. then everyone was giggling like kids you know how are we're all like nervous and weirded out by it so i i i, I mean those they're basic and also uh, the other thing i think is important is it's not just about sex that's they call it mm-hmm. sex ed but it's also about bodies and how our bodies are different, men and women's bodies are different, and how your penis is going to do this and your vagina is going to do this. And I do think that's actually really important to teach about our body parts so that there's no shaming mm. about it and it's not weird, right? But in that world, men, men are taught earlier at an earlier age about their penises and that it's totally cool. Women are not. Women are much more taught to don't talk about it, don't touch it, don't. It's weird looking, right? We got mm-hmm. all of that shit. We're like penises aren't weird looking, but vaginas are. So you have to remember that yeah. you know women are taught a whole different space, and why I think women have much more body issues than men, especially around their genitals. I had a huge um, anxiety around my genitals before, uh, mo- mo- mostly because of my trans stuff, but but also because it just I was told that it was cooler to have a penis than it was to have a vagina. 
it's interesting. Like, there's lots of words for the penis that are not vulgar. You know, there's yes. like, yes, there's lots of like, but with the pussy, like, what do you that's call right. it that's not vulgar? It's, uh, no, that's right. There's no that's, cute word. Mm. That's exactly right. See how we're totally shamed around our, around our bodies, women are. And, you know, and we have to also realize that women's puberty is much more noticeable on some level than men's puberty, right? So when women go mm. through puberty, their boobs start to grow, which are noticeable. Things start to change. You start menstruating. These are really heavy, heavy things for, for girls, girls to deal with. And mm. men don't have, and boys don't have to deal with those things. And, and so I think people don't take those things into account, how there's this different in growth and there's this difference in body image that we, that we get when we're growing into our bodies as women that men don't have to deal with. Yeah. And for me, I think the bit that really should be taught is the relationship aspect. Mm. Um, yeah. I feel like we talk about it in a very mechanical sense mm -hmm. and yes, there's differences between men and women's bodies, mm -hmm. but there's also a difference um, in the mentality. Um, That's the right. thing that, I was never taught, um, was, you know, that, you know, there is a threatening aspect to coming on to a girl, mm -hmm. especially in some situations. Um, like nobody, I mean, when I was growing up, it wasn't even an issue. Like, um, mm -hmm. if you had a relationship at work, it was just a work thing. No one cared, like right. if it was someone that worked below you or above you or whatever. But now I have like so many female friends I've seen the really uncomfortable situations they've been put yeah. in when they felt like they kind of had to sleep with someone. Yeah. And it's made me think back on my past and think mm -hmm. like shit, I was actually Ooh. quite a shitty person in sometimes. And it wasn't, it was just through a lack of understanding. Well, no, it wasn't I intentional. I, any, your no. energy isn't like that. that so I can't imagine. It, it doesn't make it. No, but well, it it's, not like okay. it's not okay. It's not okay. No, no, no. But, but, but I just think, you know, with, with some more understanding of what it's what that's the right experience is like that's right I, I just think that you know because they, they, they as a child i was taught that you know you're stronger than women our job is mm -hmm. to protect women See? but that's like not a complete picture because mm -mm. you know the, the parent that's teaching you that your, your dad usually yep doesn't have that female experience that's i think right. we're really blessed that workplaces are more mixed now Yep. So that we, we can yep. make more female friends and that's right. we live less separately. But that's I think right. also because of that, we need to include it in sex education. It's um, Well, of course, because it's natural. It is actually mm. biologically natural for a man and yeah. a woman to have some sort of, you know, that's why you don't see a lot of best friends as men and women. Sex somehow mm. comes into that space. It's an actual real thing. and And so I think... That you're right. We need to, and I thank you so much as a dude for saying that because I think more guys need to s say that kind of stuff because it's not your fault. You're just not taught. And you know, yeah. the way men come to sex is different than the way women come to sex. And mm. you know, I know that because I lived half my life as a woman and it, and it's, it's just different the way I come to sex now than I did as, as a female or how I felt uncomfortable if a guy would approach me to have sex and it's a very scary, more scary or intimidating space a lot of times for, for women. And and teaching men how to be a little less aggressive maybe on some level or to feel pissed if the girl doesn't want to have sex with you. It's not mm. the guy's fault a lot of times. I do think it's skill. I think it's skill in understanding how to maneuver through these taunt, challenging yeah, spaces. And I think also, you know, for the girls to understand what it's like to be a man. That's like, right. Um, I'm at, That's right. I understand that. I guess you're so you've seen both sides um yeah you know it is just hormones really isn't it yeah, it is <laughs> dude i'm proof <laughs> i'm totally proof of that right here dude <laughs> i'm telling you i'm a complete asshole now i'm just kidding <laughs> but that be <laughs> but that being said no i'm a different not only mentally physically just different and the way i mm. approach things it's 100 this is just hormones the only thing I did to my body was cut my breasts off. But other than everything mm -hmm. you see here is literally injecting one cc of testosterone weekly in my body for 29 years. That This is fucking insane. Wow, it's a huge difference. <laughs> oh, yeah. my God. I and it's I can't grow a beard. <laughs> <laughs> That's what people always, dudes always say to me. Dude, I'm so jealous of yeah. your beard. 
but it's mental. Yeah. I, I, I am mentally tra- uh, transitioned as well. And so, you know, I can see some of the traits that men have that I, that I take on sometimes. And I, I really do wonder if it's the testosterone pushing me in this sort of space, not to just a different way of thinking. That's all it is. It's a different way of thinking. How did testosterone change um, sex for you? Oh my God, it made sex a million times better for me. Number one, because now really? I'm, oh my God, because I'm so, you know, I've always been highly sexually charged. I can say even mm-hmm. as a female I was, but, but it was difficult because I wasn't comfortable in my body. So it was very difficult for me to have sex with, with women. And I would always wear my clothes and just rub on them. And I would never let them do anything to me mostly unless I was really drunk and wasted and don't remember a thing. So not being present in your body is horrible sex. And, and so as I grew into my male body and, you know, everyone knows I don't have a penis, but it was, that was the most difficult spot was really trying to just get my mind around my vagina and that it was, eh, it was so female, but I swear to God, my friend, the minute I let go of that and just embrace what I have as my body, my whole world changed and sex mm. became this most amazing thing ever in every part I, I have, you know, I'm bisexual, so I am sex with men and women oh you're not allowed to say bisexual anymore that's transphobic <laughs> you know you, you you should really um just explain the letters in lgbt i saw I this on your twitter so or if not i'm gonna have to quiz you <laughs> <laughs> please don't i don't know dude all i know is this okay lesbian gay okay. bisexual trans oh and then there's q now so that's queer whatever that's I but now there's that one i mean neither that... dude, because it doesn't make sense queer is not a sexuality it's like sort of like now we've taken this on as a means it and a way a for before right? that's right like, um... that's right and now everyone people who aren't even gay are using the word queer and i'm like what is happening? You can't co-opt a fucking slur because you think mm. it's cool now. It's like so many straight people are using queer. It's just bizarre. But now it's Q <laughs> I A P. I don't I, even know. I'm not even gonna go there, dude. <laughs> I, I I is intersex, right? Which at least I is, is well that's intersex. What a was the other one? one. Yeah. <laughs> I'm but sorry, what's, dude. What's P? <laughs> So everyone started the you saying pedo, and I was like, no, it's not for that. It's for no. it's for pansexual. Well, isn't that just bisexual? <laughs> yes, but then now or... bisexual is considered transphobic because it doesn't include non-binary. I'm like, you know, oh. you people are sick. You're sick because I first off be non-binary all you want, but I'm attracted to men and women. I'm actually like, mm-hmm. if you're non-binary, that's your space. But I'm actually not necessarily attracted to non-binary people. I see you as a man and a woman, and that's my prerogative. It's not, you can't tell me how to fucking feel, and you can't tell me who to have sex with. So I find it insulting that they would find it, you know, transphobic to be bisexual. I'm thinking, what's the next thing that's going to be phobic? Like, my underwear? Yeah. What kind of underwear I wear is transphobic. <laughs> could be, could be. Uh, <laughs> I could imagine that actually, oh <laughs> just God. because Dude. Um, you know you haven't <laughs> made think... inclusive underwear that fits both sets of genitals. <laughs> <laughs> I think honestly, dude, I'm going to start doing stand up comedy as the tranny, the tranny manny. That's what I'm going to do. Oh. And I'm going to start fucking talking such shit about, and they can't, they won't be able to do a thing about it. Nothing, dude. Mm. I bet I'll pack the fucking house. <laughs> uh, do you know what my favorite sexual identity is? It's, um, <laughs> it's sepiosexual. Wait, when, spell it. Sep, is it uh, real? Yes. S- yeah, it's so sepiosexual is S-E-P- when you're attracted to intelligence. For real? That's so, an actual real thing. Come so on, man. Let me uh. let me tell you why it's my favorite. So normally it's young hot girls that like guys <laughs> with money. <laughs> <laughs> Those are called sugar daddies, by the way. So you go right ahead and co-op <laughs> sugar daddy and you change the fucking that, but that's a sugar daddy, so don't even try it. <laughs> when I meet a girl and she says like, oh yeah, I'm sepiosexual, I'm like, okay, you just called me ugly, but I'm fine, I'm fine with it. <laughs> Dude, it's hilarious, man. This shit, I, you, I swear to God, man, it's they, it's re- it's comedy gold. <laughs> yeah, they're never attracted to like poor intelligent people. That's classist. That's actually classist right there, dude. So we can just fuck them up by calling them classist. They're only going to date rich fucking people. 
<laughs> yeah. <laughs> they keep making shit up. I'm telling you, these people are making every day. There's a new sexuality. There's a new gender. There's a new fucking whatever there is. They're going to dig themselves into this humongous hole. That's why when I posted on Twitter, LGBTQIA plus question mark, I said, what's next? And mm -hmm. then you should read the comments, dude, because they're brilliant. People are just putting was, shit out there. <laughs> it's awesome, dude. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, but like, the, the, the reason I bring up the letter thing is because, um, I mean, I would say I'm not like a stupid guy. I'm not like the smartest yeah. person on the planet, but I would find it very difficult to teach an adult about um, LGBTQ plus yeah. stuff because yeah. I can't explain it myself. Right. And like, I don't understand what the purpose is. Like, are we teaching yeah. tolerance? Are we teaching yeah. just about the experience of different types of people? Like what? Well, in that case, then, and that's a great question, because you're right, not everybody, I can't even necessarily teach about LGBTQ, and I'm in that community. So you're right. So what should we be teaching is human rights. That should go mm. under the label of human rights. And every kid in the world should be taught about human rights. And they should taught, and then we should stick every kind of minority or marginalized community into this human rights arena. And then when you do that, now you're not only, why are we only teaching about LGBT stuff? Why aren't we teaching about, you mm. know, racism? Why aren't we teaching, which we are, but you know what I mean? Or why aren't we teaching about, um, a poverty? A ver ver mm. ver verse, you know what I mean? Capitalism. Versus, the, the, there's a lot of other things that we could teach under the human rights label. And it just feels that they're pinpointing LGBTQ at this point, which is why people are getting pissed because they feel like there's an agenda. And on some level, I do too, that, that there's this idea that they're going to start teaching kids that men and women don't exist. And they're actually doing that. And so mm. that's not okay because that's not reality. So, so on some level, we do need to teach kids about LGBT because there's going to be gay kids out there. And so what we need to do is I think teach it in a means in a way that says the, all of these things in the world are, are not, are not in the same space as, as, as having rights. Right. And so I think people need to understand mm -hmm. what that means. And then LGBTQ goes into that space where people of, of color necessarily don't have that. Right. Gay people don't have that, you know, trans people on some level don't have that. And, you know, I think it's, that's the way to do it is to kind of put um, encompass it under an umbrella of stuff. Yeah, I think you're right. I never thought of it like that before. I just always assumed that sexuality was a sex education topic, but actually, but not really. it's not, yeah. is it? It's, a it's human not. Rights issue. That's right. It's a human rights issue. Uh, mm. uh, you know, it's a means and a way to say these people want to live their life like everybody else. We need to normalize it. So when I see these goddamn teachers, ah, my name is Mick Susie and I'm a trans non-binary fucking weirdo and I got every goddamn flag in my goddamn classroom that's everything from 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 you know s and m flags and i'm like what you're literally putting the sm flag in there to trans flag to gay flag to you know that flag and i'm thinking the kids are looking at all of this like what the hell's going on and then that's that's what's happening that i find is an agenda it's some mm. sort of agenda the teacher isn't teaching all about the whole thing she's all right that feels to me like an agenda like you made your yeah. classroom the gay classroom and so what about the other teachers? Do they, do they have maps on their wall, which is what you should have in your classroom, a map. Yeah, and you know think. what I mean? <laughs> and things like that, <laughs> that are actual skill to move through the world. And yeah, LGBT and, and, should be a small part of that. And for me, one of the things, I mean, like I say, for me, it's, I, I'm one of the people that's not lucky enough to live in America. <laughs> right on. For me, <laughs> for me, like the American flag means something it's actually a very special thing. It's like, That's right. I look at the American flag and I see like, you know, it's the only real democracy in the world. That's right. It's the only place in the world with free speech. That's right. And I feel like that's what should be celebrated. That's you know, like, right. Like, like gay rights originate in America. That's and right. To the world. That's it right. should be like celebrating all of the gifts that America. Dude, you just hit it right on the head and, you just gave me chills. That's exactly what I keep trying to teach everybody. We live in America. When you start posting and pushing on these kinds of things, that's not America. That's fascism. When you start telling people we have to do pronouns, and when you start telling people that you're a transphobe for not doing this, when you start, that's actually some kind of weird fascist, which is being taught in universities here. Marxism, mm. socialism, all of that shit is being taught in a means and a way to take our democracy away. And I will not be a part of that. I live in America for a fucking reason. 
because I want to be able to say what I want to fucking say. If it hurts your feelings, figure it the fuck out and go over there because this is my space right now. And for you to intrude on my space and tell me that I'm a bigot and I'm this when you are actually intruding on my space makes no sense. And so that's why, you know, I, I speak out and on some level now have been sort of pushed into this more conservative space, if that makes sense. I'm totally in the middle of that, if that makes sense. But that being said, yeah, I understand. I, 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 yeah, I, 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 I'm more about reality and I'm more about really helping the world move together, but we're not doing this. People are saying some weird ass shit in my community, right? And I, I, it makes no sense to me what they're trying to do. Um, one, like, I mean, gay, trans, everyone, they do have equal rights now don't they yeah like, does yeah. discrimination still happen maybe well, sometimes is it discrimination is gonna know. happen dude discrimination is gonna happen forever and so that's what i it's like i'm old remember how old i am and i've been mm. doing this for a long fucking time i'm not talking out of my ass i really have experience in this guess what <laughs> racism is gonna exist forever transphobia is gonna exist forever get and it's sad i'm not cool with it but it's the reality mm -hmm. of it. So in my lifetime, I don't think I'll ever not see it. And, you know, trans stuff has been at the height and, and people have been much more observant. But what's happening is you're taking away a lot of rights that we, people like myself and before me, have fought for that have been so fucking solid and we have been moving forward. And now we're losing those rights because of these people overriding what we have done and saying that anyone who says anything about trans people is transphobic. Well, that just shut the conversation down. Because you're not meeting people in the middle. I know how to make change. I've done it for a long fucking time. How you make change is I listen to you. You don't like me. I listen to you. And I understand why you don't like me. And then I say, all right, my friend, let me just have a little conversation with you here. I don't want to take yeah. your rights away. I want to coexist with you. Boom. Right there, dude. Me and you are now solid. And, and that's how you make change. You don't tell people they're wrong and they're stupid and they're, you know, misaligned and they're, and they're misogynist. Mm. And you don't do that because that's when people push back. And, and so I, I see a means and a way of this community right now doing things that are so incredibly dangerous and has nothing to do with human rights. And it has everything to do with domination and fascism on, on and shutting down freedom of speech. Mm. What rights do you think we're losing? Uh, the rights I think that we're losing is, for example, we have a law in Texas that's passing that says nobody, nobody can transition a child or can't even talk about transitioning. I, I don't agree with that. What I don't agree mm. with is putting medication in a child. And what I don't agree with is doing surgery on a child. But I do agree with a child. There are trans ki kids out there. I call them dysphoric kids. But they are. And they do need help. I was one of those. So when you mm. shut that law down because that law is just a blanket law, you've now affected me. You've affected kids who, you know, who do necessarily need that medication. So what's happening is, is that we're pushing so hard that they're pushing so hard back. You, you see mm. what I mean? I and understand. so that that's the dangerous part that I and am. Wait be, a minute. <laughs> they must be very difficult when you're young and you're different. And that's right. That's like, right. Like, who do you talk to? That's right. Not allowed to talk. Allowed to. Now these kids aren't allowed mm. to be that. And that's fucked up. And I will not be a part of that. But, but, but that's only because they started medicalizing children, which I said, stop it. Just stop. Mm -hmm. First off, why are we talking about it? Why are we actually talking about it to the world? This is a private thing. When you transition, it's private. It's a medical space. You're trying to get your shit together. Why all of a sudden is the whole world know our business, right? That's where mm -hmm. I said we, we as trans people got politicized. They're using us as a political pawn in this whole fucking game. And that's where it became dangerous because this is a condition. I have a medical condition that needs help through medical medicalization. And, and then now look at me. I walk the world like a little badass, right? That's when I want these kids to have the same opportunity. But they're not going to get it because these fucking wingnuts in my community are like trans kids are kids. First off, why are you calling them trans kids? They're not trans kids. They're kids with dysphoria. They might grow out of it. There's studies where they grow out of it. So when we start pumping. Oh, really? Yes. There's tons of studies that say if you leave a kid alone, there's like 90% of the time they're going to grow out of it or they're going to be gay or they're going to just be mm -hmm. gay kids. They're not necessarily trans. But when, when the whole thing is being talked yeah. about is trans, 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 and kids hear that, they're like, I'm trans. And guess what? You're actually not trans. You're something else. And it's just this really sound, horrifying. This question will sound really ignorant, but 
Do you think that um, there's an element of fashion in <laughs> LGBT? <laughs> of course. Like, yeah. I remember when I was young, it was kind of fashionable <laughs> to be bisexual. <laughs> That's right. And, That's right. That's and I, right. And I thought, okay, <laughs> this sounds cool. It's more choice, right? <laughs> And I remember <laughs> I tried to kiss a guy and I was like, this is fucking hard. <laughs> <laughs> you were like, okay, I'm not bi. <laughs> I'm yeah, just like, done. I'm out. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome, dude. Well, I have to give it to you because you tried. So <laughs> I'm going to give like, you that one. I was like, okay, okay, let's see what this is about. Maybe I'm just like, you know, being closed minded. You know? <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> like, Maybe not. But, yeah, it turns out not. So, but so, yeah, so, so to, your question is a hundred percent. I do think, and you know, I, I would not have said that before, but through the last couple of years that I've been really digging into what the fuck is going on. And then when I get attacked by a community that I have worked for, for 30 years, I say, something's wrong here. You don't attack mm-hmm. an elder in a community that, you know, and, and honestly, I, I just want you to know that I don't ask for anything. I don't, that is not why I'm here. And that's not why I did that shit. The only thing I have ever said is respect me. You don't have to agree with me, but respect me as an elder in this. Oh my God, the kids say such insane shit to me. And I'm like, wait, this is not, this is not right. You don't talk to somebody in your community who has done a lot of work in this community that way. You don't have to agree with me. But so, so that's when I said, wait a minute, something's funny going on here. And then the next thing that made me go, okay, I'm done. This is like a fashionable thing is when they started to say, you do not need gender dysphoria to be trans. And I was like, so you don't need cancer to have cancer. It's pretty much the same equation. I'm like, wait, that fucking freaks me out. So kids just want to be trans. They just want to mm. be trans. Because if you don't need anything to be trans and you just say you're trans, that says to me that it's a fad. And it's some kind of thing that, like you just said, I want to try to be bisexual. Kids are trying to be trans. And guess what's happening when they're trying to be trans? They are not trans. So they end up detransitioning right so they end up stopping I've read about hormones. This. It's, and it's controversial it seems oh um, man it's only controversial in the trans community only they mm. hide it they don't want to talk about it it's like it's like the the bad person in the room we want to put them over there so everybody doesn't think we're all fucking nuts right but no you can't hide that there's twenty seven thousand members of a detransitioning group on reddit twenty seven thousand. these are young kids Nope. Mm. Nope. You don't. And if you can tell me that it's not a fad, then you're not watching and you're not listening. Yeah. And I think as, you know, especially teenagers, when hormones are going absolutely That's right. wild. That's right. Um, we do try on different identities. That's like, right. Um, I, whenever there's like a summer break or something, <laughs> I feel like a lot of people come back like uh, reinvented. Like I remember one yeah. guy at school, he was like a, just a nerdy guy who came <laughs> back to school wearing a vest, dressed like a rock. <laughs> Uh, wearing sunglasses <laughs> indoors i'm like it's not what? this guy and he's like and he changed his name <laughs> like, <laughs> that's right like, that's right yeah. that's a great analogy and i have to say like i don't have an issue with anyone figuring out who they are 110 mm. percent. i don't even care if you wear clothes that look different. what i care about is kids and what i care mm. about is this changed my life and it made my life fucking amazing Why is that not happening to these guys? Why are they looking back and saying, wait a minute, I I never said that. So that's why I say, but wait a minute here. So then I'm looking at them and I'm studying them and they're all saying the same thing. The number one thing that that is really plugs into every single one of these kids detransitioning is therapy. Not one of them had a therapist tell them or even have any therapy. They just went into a a space, got testosterone, shot it in their body, and they were trans. And I'm like, wow, that's a train wreck. And I proved it. There's a train wreck now because all these kids are not trans. They just wanted to be a part of something because Mm. kids are like that. They always want to be a part of this cool thing that's happening, like TikTok. So, so, But the problem is when you start cutting off kids' boobs, and you start putting in medication that is irreversible, what are we going to do with all these kids who have mustaches and now want to be women again and have no boobs? What are we going to do? These kids are going to be fucked up mentally for the rest of their life, and they're going to be pissed off. They might even be suicidal. So when they use this mantra that if you don't transition a trans kid, they're going to kill themselves, I'm like, "Uh, wait a minute here. We have detransitioners who are killing themselves. So I can Mm -hmm. actually show you that you're fucking full of shit. 
So it's not, they're, they're using these buzzwords and these things in order to push us all into this space to feel guilty if we don't sort of get on board with trans kids. Yeah, I understand that the suicide rate for the trans community is really, really high. Well, so I, supposedly. I, <laughs> that those suicide tendencies. So so let's uh, make sure that we understand what that means, right? People are saying it's when they say the suicide rate is high. Mm-hmm. But what's high is the suicide tendency. It's the suicidal thoughts. It's not oh, the so actual I thought that was yeah. See the play on 40%. words? They said 40% nope. of trans nope. commit suicide. Nope. That's and right. Like, they sure do. Nope. No, wow. they do not. So that's not true. No, it's tendencies. Okay. So, so for so, me, I was thinking like, yeah, maybe if there's a 40% chance they're going to die, maybe it's worth just... A hundred percent. A hundred percent. But at the same time, if people are suicidal, what do you do with a suicidal person? You put them in psychotherapy. You put them in some form mm. of mental health care. They're not even doing that. So they're saying, we have trans kids who are suicidal. You better give them puberty blockers right away. You better give them... There's no mm. fucking proof except for Finland and Sweden, who now have stopped doing that. By the way, they've been doing it for 20, 30 years. They stopped doing it because they said there's no proof that this is actually making it better for these kids. So they no longer get puberty blockers. Yet here we are in America pushing it like fucking candy. And I like, it's all medical, babe. It's all medical. It's all money. It's all an agenda. It's all ideology. And I'm telling you right now, mark my words, everybody will see this and even now and in five years, and they'll be like, Buck was right. These kids are going to come back to sue the fuck out of everybody, including I their parents. Say, are they yep. suing? Yep. They already are. Yeah. They already started. Oh. And I don't blame them. I actually encourage them. I encourage them. Mm. I'd be pissed. I would be pissed right now if this was not who I really am. Yet everyone told me I was, and I didn't get any mental health care. I went to 10 years of mental health care before I transitioned. I mean, I did so much stuff to make myself in this space because we had to. We had actual structure. You had to go to a therapist for something. You had to live as the man you wanted to be. Then you, had, you know, mm-hmm. there, there were steps. That's called self care. That's called safekeeping. They call it gatekeeping now. So it's a means and a way to stop that so that anyone can just transition. Don't you think that's weird? Why would you just want anyone to transition? I, I always say that, like, you know, if. Whenever someone says, oh, I'm thinking of getting a tattoo, I always say, like, maybe wait a little bit. And <laughs> totally. <laughs> this this seems shit ain't like going something... away, dude. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's like, I was thinking, this, um, <laughs> this sounds like something more serious, so you should maybe, like, not rush in, you know? It's, uh... That's right. A calm. God, every day I talk to these guys. Calm. Yeah, I know you want to. I mean, you know, the problem is, it's like, here I am. So they see me. Right. And they see me in this means in a way of being very successful. I live my life. I'm a total dude. I have an awesome life. I say it every day, but they don't realize I transitioned 29 years ago. It took me a long time to get to this space, but they see me and they want it. They want it, but they don't realize it's not that. No, it's literally going to take many, 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 many years of hard work, of mental health, of shooting testosterone, going to the gym, like doing all the things that I do on a daily basis. You know, I have to work to be this dude. It's not just handed to me. That's what people don't understand. They just think that I'm this dude. I have to work at this. It's not like you. You just wake up in the morning and you're a dude. That's not how it is for somebody like me. And I think these kids are being told lies and they're being told and deceitful for a bigger Mm -hmm. ideology. So there's people up there pulling the strings and using these children as a means and a way to sort of push their agenda on this space because you can use kids. Kids are malleable and kids are easy to influence. Mm, I was going to ask if it's a conspiracy by Gillette to sell more razors, but... (laughs) (laughs) On some level it is. I just said it. It's an ideology because where I come from, I'm a transsexual man and I have a thing called gender dysphoria and I have been Mm -hmm. diagnosed with this mental disorder. It's an actual disorder. Mm -hmm. And they're doing me and other transsexual people a disservice. All we want to do as trans people is go from A to Z. That's it. I wanted to go from living as a woman to living as a man, move back into the world and be a badass. And that's what all I ever wanted. And that's what mm-hmm. most of us only want. We don't want all this, te- all of this um, attention. That's, that's why I'm wondering why are these kids wanting all this attention to be trans? Because it's a cool thing to be trans. And that's mm-hmm. what they think until they actually start to transition. Then they realize it's not that cool. 
And it's a lot of fucking work for the rest of your fucking life. And that's why I say I'd rather not give that kid puberty blockers. I'd rather him suffer a little bit, whatever that fucking mm -hmm. means. And then when he gets to be 13 and 14, he has a little bit more understanding about stuff, can maybe start to make some kind of adjustment there. But when you start giving that stuff to eight-year-olds, guess what? Forever that eight-year-old will have to inject hormones. Why do you want to do that um, to a kid? I don't, I don't understand that. And I think there's some extra elements as well of, um, especially if you're transitioning from, say, female to male. Mm -hmm. um, like, I know men are seen as, um, like, being, you know, the kind of privileged sex. That's right. But actually, it's very difficult to That's be right. a man. Um, That's right. Like testosterone and our hormones are very difficult, and um, like the suicide rate for men definitely is much higher. That's right. Um, and That's right. feelings of isolation, loneliness—they're they're huge for men. Um, and I'm, I'm, I just can't imagine if you're if you have gender dysphoria or and you do transition as a teenager, mm -hmm. um, having those that male experience might not be a good thing. It, it might That's be like right. an extra layer of difficulty. That's right. Especially if it's not really what you're supposed to be. And how do I know mm. that? Because I talk every day to, I have a, ver a very good friend who's a young kid who's 19 who transitioned at uh, 18 and decided that it was the wrong choice that he made and started going back to living as a girl. He's at a university where half the university, half of the population of young women are transitioning to, tra to, be, or to men. Or trend, half of the female wow. population. It's mind blowing. Is? It's a contagion. It's a full on contagion. So here's what I'm going to tell you. So, every, you know, I talk to the kid every day because he's just so, he says, every day when these other students who are trans know that I'm detransitioning, they come up to me and they say, don't do it. You know, maybe you're just making it. They try to talk him out or her now. She's back to her. They try to talk her out of it and they try to shame her around it. And they try to tell her that you're making a big mistake and that you're going to ruin it for all of us. So I'm like, wow, that says so much to me. It, it is such a fucking, what do you call it? A hive mind. All these kids mm. are like thinking the same and are so worried that if someone detransitions, it's going to affect them. So that, you know, these are the things that we need to a see in the world. To have to think like that, isn't it? That's so, right. It's fucking scary, like, man. So this kid transitioned for the wrong reason. He, she thought that it was going to change her life and she was going to be better. And she thought I was a man. She said, I never am a man. I'm not a man. I don't even want to be a man. I'm a total woman and I want to be a woman. So this person had to go through some hormonal therapy. Thank God they didn't do any surgery. And all of a sudden realized I made a mistake. Because they didn't get therapy. They went into Planned Parenthood, 45 minute intake. After 45 minutes, they shot testosterone into her. Can you imagine? What's Planned Parenthood got to do with Oh my God. Science? That's right. Planned Parenthood. I'm sure you know about Planned Parenthood. They're an amazing organization for women's mm. health, but now they're doing transgender health. They're doing transgender health. So anyone could walk into it's a one clinic. one way to stop them having babies, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> totally. <laughs> I never thought of that. <laughs> <laughs> They're going to go from one business of abortion to, to transitioning yeah. young girls so they don't even have babies. <laughs> oh, my God. We're writing good comedy shit here, dude. <laughs> At the expense of kids. Uh, <laughs> yeah, that, that's the best. Uh, but, um, do you think that, like, what role should school <laughs> and teachers have um, mm. for, in, like, trans mm. and gay children? Well... I mean, again, we're going to talk about ages because we can't just talk about school. There's different mm. levels of school, right? So I think on some level, we need to start teaching acceptance and, 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 you know, tolerance. I don't know about that word, but, you know, acceptance and that there are going to be these kids in there and that, you know, a trans kid. Here, I'm going to give you this example. I, I know a kid okay. up the street who I, who is the same age as, as my son and he's friends with him. He's a trans kid. He's a girl who feels like a boy. And now he's, I forgot his name. Let's just say Oliver. And he, he, you know, he used to be um, Olivia and now he's Oliver and he goes to school. He was all, he was Olivia at the school last year. And when he went back to the school this year, he was Oliver. Guess what? The kids were like, whatever. They were just like, mm -hmm. whatever. That's how kids are. And I talked yeah, to yeah. my son and I said, so what do you think about Oliver? And he said, oh, whatever. <laughs> I didn't even have anything yeah, yeah. to say about it. So we, as, as adults, it, we are so fucking weird. Sometimes we just don't let things naturally be. 
And, you know, kids are smart. And also, they pretty much don't give a shit about stuff that we care about. So they just yeah, don't yeah. care that a kid is Oliver. They're just, does Oliver play baseball good? Because that's all I give a shit about. Is he going to be on my team? Can he fucking mm-hmm. hit a ball? Like, that's really the basis of the whole thing. And I think we're putting too much emphasis on trans kids and making sure that they're okay in school. Let the kids deal with it. And and the other thing is, is that I do think when you start getting into a higher grade level that we do have to have the conversation and say, you know, there might, might be some kids in our class that are a little bit different. And so, you know, I just want you to know that this is how it is. And then we move on. We don't have any more conversation about it or maybe not have conversation about it, right? Because why do we have to, kids are going to school to learn. They are not necessarily going to school to be taught like human rights stuff. They're being taught, you know, science and math and all those things. But I think once you get to be a sort of, I think for me, high school is a very important space to start to learn about, you know, um, the world and racism and transphobia and all the LGBT. I think in high school, I just feel like the other levels, it's a, it's a very tricky space. And I think by, by just doing it in a way that says, these people are here now let's move on. Right. Mm. Yeah. But you just made me think of something um, when I was talking about school responsibility. And yeah. I was thinking, like, sometimes maybe the parents can be a problem too. Like, I yeah. was just thinking to um, yeah. a guy when I was a child, we all knew he was gay, like, mm-hmm. before right. he did, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Um, it was like when you drive past a hot girl, all the yeah. guys would look behind. <laughs> he didn't. Was, <laughs> That's a dead giveaway. <laughs> yeah. And. <laughs> I remember like when he got to 16, he did the thing of like running away from home, went yeah. to London and then came back fashionable and yeah. good looking. Gay. And I was like, <laughs> what, what happened? <laughs> um, but his parents really struggled to accept it. Whereas, yeah. you know, school would be more accepting. And of course, like, how, how do you think we can balance, balance those issues for the people that do have parents? Well, again, it's, thing? First off, things have changed. I mean, from your mm-hmm. time and my time, let's just be honest yeah. here. Things have changed, especially for gay people. A hundred percent. Of course, you're I, I, like I said in the beginning of their show, there's always going to be homophobia because we have religion. When we have when we have organized religion and it teaches us these things, it's never going to go away. So, so Mm. that's the thing that people don't understand. There are a lot of Christians in the world who don't believe LGBT people are solid and they're teaching Mm. that in churches. And so we're always going to have to be pushing against that message. And, and so that's the thing that our, my community doesn't seem to understand. And that I learned as a person is fight the battles you can fight and find the spaces because one little battle one can help the next battle, but you can't fight the big battle first. It will never, it will, you'll never do it. And that's what's happening today is we're trying to fight this overall huge battle by just crushing into it, but that will not work. So I do think little by little, that's how we got gay rights passed. That's how we got marriages Mm -hmm. passed. And now nobody in America gives a shit about gay people anymore. It's like your next door neighbor is gay. Who cares? There's, I think it's much more accepted than we talk about. Um, the trans thing is is much more accepted than we talk about. And I think that the trans community tries to make it look like everybody hates us. What everybody hates is liars and deceitful people. And so mm. what's happening is the trans community is pushing out lies. When they say biology isn't real, that's a lie. That's an actual real lie. And the whole yeah. reason that we're transsexual or transgender is because of biology. So they're hurting us by these weird ass messages and they're not being honest to the world. And then that hurts our cause more than anything. When you see people like Leah Thomas, the swimmer, uh, an NCAA um, swimmer. I, I, I didn't want to bring that up unless- Bring it up. I'll talk about it. <laughs> Fuck yeah. <laughs> I, I just feel like uh, one, of, one of the reasons is like, I was so nervous about this podcast because, because you know, I'm, I'm a straight- Cisgender male. What? I'm white. Dude, I love I'm you, like, dude. I love you. <laughs> like, I just think what I feel like um, my opinion is kind of invalidated somehow. That's not true. Um, That's not true, my so, friend. I'm not in my world, and I fucking hate that shit because mm-hmm. now all of a sudden, white cisgender men are at the lowest of the fucking bottom of the fucking scummy pond. Right? Bullshit. Half of my friends are guys like you, and half of my friends, mm-hmm. guys like you, have done nothing but amazing things for me. 
So I'm going to tell you that I hate that. I hate that message. I hate what we're feeding the world that people like you are this bad person who've done all this bad shit. You can't lay. That's like saying all trans people are one way, right? That's the hypocrisy. Mm. That yeah, right there is the hypocrisy. Groups. I hate labeling. Yeah, groups. they're like um, grouping everybody yeah. in. I stand out on my own as a trans person, right? I'm the mm. kind of trans person that people are like, uh, are you allowed to say that? <laughs> my hat says tranny. For a fucking reason. So, so because mm. I push, I push on these agendas. I don't, I don't believe that you can actually stamp this thing on a whole group of people, right? That all white yeah, men yeah. are bad and they're the ones who caused all the bullshit in the world. That's not true. Yeah. And, I just um, think most people are pretty cool and just, um, that's right. There's, like a few, there's a few assholes out there. And there's always like, assholes. There'll yeah. always be assholes in every group of people. So it's not just the white man. I can point out a lot of ladies who are assholes and you know what I mean? I can point out a lot of trans people who are assholes or gay men who are assholes. I mean, I could go on and on. So I just don't like that yeah. group think. And I don't, I don't like that. This idea that all this, all of one people are bad. That's not true at all. Mm. So, um, Leah, let's rim it. <laughs> let's do it, dude. Let's rip it. <laughs> oh my God. Like, I was looking at the photo and just, like oh fuck I mean, off what, what can you say fuck like, off that's what i say <laughs> like you know what man i'm not gonna be a part of that nonsense like that's nonsense i was a female athlete by the way a very high ranking female okay. athlete so i can actually have a conversation about this and i ran during the ussr remember i don't know how old you are but the ussr dominated sports back in the day because all the chicks were on steroids and, you know, they were double yeah. my size. I can show you pictures, man. I'll start yeah, posting. Yeah, no, I like, remember. I remember. Oh, my God. We would just be like, what? And they would fucking kill us. Yeah. So I equated a lot to that. Yeah, Leah mm. Thomas is a trans woman. Good for her. Awesome. Right on, lady. You found your space in the world. But how dare you all of a sudden come into a space and she knows what she's doing. That's what's pissing me off. She knows but goddamn well what she's doing. And the thing is, is that she's ruining it for us. She's ruining it for yeah. all of us. Because she's not being, she's being disingenuous. And as a sports person, she should know better. She's killing, you know, those poor women, it, it breaks my girls, fucking heart. young girls. Young like, girls. It breaks my heart. And I stand up and like, I say it every day. My community is always like, you're a fucking girl. I go, fuck you. How dare you say it's okay for that woman to do that to those women who worked their ass off. Now, now they're never going to get to where they wanted to be. It's so, you know, it's it just sick. like scholarships and not just like None of it. people that. Yeah, um, just overrode. Shame on Leah Thompson. I will not. I will not. I don't care. If she's trans. I don't care any of that. It means nothing to me. What I care about is sportsmanship, and that's not mm. sportsmanship. And she knows that there's no way you can be an athlete and not know what you're doing is wrong and what she's doing is wrong. And you know what? She would be a badass. If, you know how she would be a badass if she stood up right now and she said, "You know what? I feel like this is not my space right now. I feel like I'm just way too out of the space." And I want to create a transgender swimming league. If she did that, man, she would be so powerful. The whole world would mm. be for her. The whole world. But nope, she can't do it. And so that's why I won't support or, her. She's a liar. Or just like maybe if she competed but just didn't get a medal, you know, just take part. That's like, right. Take part. You That's it. right. You give your medal to the girl. That's like, right. And stood on the it's... side and said, you know what, my friend, this is for you. I'm the first yeah. transgender woman to win this race. Right on. But you're the first woman to run. Yeah. I mean, it would be so powerful and so beautiful. And it would really make the coexistence, which is what I preach constantly. And so yeah. I find her to be deceitful and I find her to be have no integrity. But there's part of me, like this is going to sound really sick, but... um. You know, like when you're watching, like, I mean, I watch mostly football, like soccer, <laughs> um, but I kind of admire like good cheating sometimes, you know, <laughs> some, 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 some real fuckery, and, some you know, like, real fuckery, cheats, dude. <laughs> and, then, and then they like take their medal and they just act like nothing. Like happened. nothing. And, like, <laughs> I have got to <laughs> admire the balls on that girl. That's right. To just like, to That's just right. keep going. No, That's you're incredible. right. You're it's right. Like, like she's all whatever and just be like oh yeah I'm that's right <laughs> that's right no you're totally right i and i get that and and probably that's in her brain she's basically like, go yeah. fuck yourself i can do yeah. this if i she want to and everyone's it. and everyone's letting her do it that's what's even more absurd like everyone's she, just she in, knows what she's she doing, knows like say. and she it's knows like, um, it's yeah, you've got to admire that kind of like fuck you yeah. aspect 
It is. It's yeah. a, I, and, and, you know, I do come from that space where I'm like, fuck you. You don't like that I'm a man with a vagina. I don't care. And I know that I grew my platform on that, but I'd never hurt anybody. I never <laughs> hurt. I never took anybody's space. I created my space. Mm -hmm. And that's what I'm trying to tell the world. You've got to create your own space. You cannot take space from people. That is totally irresponsible on so many levels. It's irresponsible of her as a trans woman. It's irresponsible of her as an athlete. It's irresponsible of her as somebody who's now a spokesperson for for swimming and for trying to get us to move forward because she's not going to make us move forward. She's going to take away a lot of our rights. Do you think it's real or do you think she's literally... Because to me, it seems so ridiculous. <laughs> like... The, like <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's a like, total comedy show. Do, do you think, like, he just watched that episode of South Park? I <laughs> mean, uh, totally did. And just thought, you know what? I'm like, <laughs> let's prove a point. Like, maybe he is aware of what he's doing. And it's oh, like, he is. He can't. It's a protest, maybe. Yep. Yep. Totally cannot be aware. It wouldn't surprise me if it's a protest. But there's a lot of ego in the trans world. There's a lot of fucking ego coming, especially a lot out of the trans woman world. And this idea, you know, if you notice most of the, most of the voice and most of the is sanity is coming from the trans we, woman space. You don't see a lot of trans men speaking up or out. And so mm -hmm. you, you just see a lot of trans women like, ah, you're a transphobe and you're a turf. And if you don't let trans, if you don't have sex with a trans woman, you're a transphobe. I mean, the insanity shit that's coming out of these people's mouths uh, mm. uh, 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 is like something other than what uh, most of us are doing as trans people. We don't want all this attention. You know what I mean? They're making all this weird attention towards us. And that's not what trans is about. It's become a political agenda. And that's what I think mm. Leah Thomas is. She's being used as a, as a pawn in the game and she's being used. I mean, I don't know how smart the woman is. Uh, 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 I don't understand where, where she's coming from. But the fact that she's doing this says a lot to me about really her integrity. And I don't think that she mm. is um, uh, doing us a service. I think it's all about her and it's her ego. It's her ego writing what you said. She's all basically, fuck you. There's nothing you can do about it, which is true. There's nothing we can do about it. Seems it's incredible. like incredible. Just incredible. Incredible. Yeah. <laughs> just, just, I mean, I, I'm just laughing because it's like, <laughs> just, every so often I think of the picture. <laughs> I know, me too. I saw it today on Twitter. I was like, oh shit, here we go. <laughs> yeah. I saw the one that Blair White posted. I <laughs> that's the one, dude. And, I was like, and that's oh, the thing is, she's a trans woman and she has a powerful trans woman who speaks out against all of me and her friends about mm. all this nonsense. So, she's you know, incredible. Just she's incredible. An intelligent person. Yes. I wouldn't want to. No, nope, don't fuck with her. With her. <laughs> no, she's fucking on. That's why yeah. she's my friend because she has integrity and she cares about mm. this community and she will not stand for the for this bullshit either. So, you know, that that she's a very important person in this community because she does say this shit a lot of people want to say but are too scared to say. Mm. Yeah. So, but let's try to finish on a positive. So, mm. um That's right. How do we how do we fix this? <laughs> <laughs> Well, it's going to fix itself is what I believe. It will fix itself. And it's why I'm here standing up to speak about shit. Because I do think that the community, the people in the community who give a shit about our community are starting to see this stuff and starting mm -hmm. to see how the world is pushing back on us. So I think what's happening is that, and I'll say it every time I am anywhere and I get to open my mouth, coexistence. I want to coexist with you, my friend. I do not want to take your space. And that's what majority of transsexual people want. We just want to live in a world where we feel comfortable with ourselves and you see us and we're done. And, you know, and, and that's it. And so I think what's happening is that, that thank God that people are starting to see the deceitful stuff coming out of this community. Um, but it doesn't represent our community. And that's what I think mm -hmm. people need to hear. And because it doesn't represent, I think things are going to change because me and you get to have an, a talk right here and me mm -hmm. and you get to actually be buddies. And I think if more people see me and you to come together, they're going to be like, oh, those are trans people. <laughs> oh, mm -hmm. those are the ones that actually just want to coexist in the world. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's why I wanted you to explain it as well is because um, I think a lot of straight guys that maybe don't have gay friends or trans yeah. friends. Yeah. They just see it as a threat. I think. That's right. I think they do see it as a threat. They do. And I live in a country which is not like America. Like Hungary yeah. is insane. 
Wow. They passed a law recently, so like no gay or trans person can present oh. kids' TV shows. Oh it's man! Like, I'm like, who are they going to get to present them then? You know? Guess <laughs> what like... though? Guess where that came from? That came from this country. Really? They're watching yeah, I think us. He does oh yeah, yeah, yeah. They're watching us. And, when we um... have drag queens. We have drag queens reading books to kindergarten or third grade. Uh, people are going to lose their shit. It's real. Mm. So, so, yeah. and, and, and that's the problem is we're not, oh, it's just, we can have this conversation. It's exporting a bad idea, isn't it? That's it's, right. Um, that's right. When you bring like, kids, ugh, when you bring kids into the equation, everything shuts down. You cannot yeah. fuck with kids. Like you can't fuck with cats. You can't fuck with kids. And once kids, people see kids being medicalized and transed and all this shit, people are like, so that's what happened in Hungary. Sorry, that was our, we yeah. did that to your well, country. And like, honestly, like, um, gay people have such a hard time here. It's, um, yeah, I know. You, I know. you can't really be open. Like, you should see yeah. the gay pride march here. Oh. Um, it's, they put barriers up and they have riot police oh because we have real Nazis here. That's Not right. You call a Nazi. That's we have right. Real Nazis. Real Nazis. <laughs> yeah. Um, that's and, right. You know, yeah, gay rights here are non-existent, really. So that's um, what people in this country need to see. When they start mm. fucking pulling this fascist bullshit, they need to see things that happen there. And that when you shut my voice down, you're going to shut your voice down eventually, too. You think you could cancel yeah. me and shut me down? That's the biggest mistake you're ever going to make. Because that's when they start having control over all of us. Look at that's why we mm. need to see that stuff in other countries because we don't have that here yet. But it's going to, you know, when people start saying that don't say gay bill, that's saying to me we're moving in that direction as hungry is. Mm. And that sort and of I didn't scares realize me. That, I didn't realize that you were, that that idea was exported from America. So oh, totally. Think about it. Mm. We're America, dude. We're, we're, we're the mm. fucking country everyone wants to be in. And so people see what we're doing here. It's all over the fucking internet. So when they see yeah. that, it gets into conservative countries like yours. And then they're like, oh, we don't want that weird American shit coming over here. Mm. That's what they're doing. So they block it immediately. So it's ne never going to happen. And that's, that's the conversation. How, what's the effect of our insanity of ideology, woke ideology? How is that affecting the rest of the world? Yeah. And that's the thing. Yeah. The world does look to America for leadership. Like, that's um, right. That's right. Even like Saudi Arabia letting yeah. women drive now. That's know? right. That's because of us. That, that, that comes from pressure from America. Okay. It's a baby that's right. step and it's so insulting. But, yes, it um, is. But it's the way it change. Some progress. Yeah. That's right. And all so. I want is progress. I don't feel progress right now. I feel like we're going to actually start going. We are. When those laws in the other countries and all, we're going backwards. Mm. It, it, five years ago, we were like, yeah, dude, we're not gay, right? We're not moving forward. And then er, <laughs> you can't say this. You can't say that. That's, that is the beginning of the end. When you tell people mm. they can't read books, right? We started banning books in schools and, 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 and actually exactly. when my friend wrote a book, her name is Abigail Schreier and she wrote a book called, ah. uh, Irreversible Damage that, that got yeah, so I fucking nailed. It. I heard it's a it great book. Joe Rogan, I think. Yeah. And she, and she went on Joe and, um, but anyways, my point being is they tried to ban the book and I'm like, you know, you mm. ban that book and the LGBT book is going to get banned next. So don't think that you're doing us a service when you ban a book because the reality of we live in America. And if you don't want to read the book, don't read it. But it should be, yeah. you know, they have Mein Kampf on fucking Amazon, but they won't put irreversible damage. That says something to me that they'll yeah. put a book from Hitler up there because they think everyone should read it. But they won't put a book about transitioning children that that should people need to wake up. There's some weird dis, mm. you know, thing going on. But leaving let's leave on a nice note. Yeah, the nice note and the thing, are changing. That's right. The the great thing and what I want to say to the world here is this. Pay attention, okay? Because rights will be taken away if you don't pay attention, even under the guise of human rights. And so we all live in a space where we have to participate. And if you don't participate, you must understand that could be very damaging, whatever that e means by participation. But I want to say this, I believe in humans and I believe that we all want to exist together. I believe that is an actual real thing in all of our mm -hmm. hearts. But I think we get misguided sometimes because we hear things. Do your research. Don't believe everything you're told and understand that everything is out there in reality if you search for it and you will find it. 
but don't just take things at, at, at face value because in this day and age, everything can become very deceiving and deceitful. Mm-hmm. But I believe in the future and I believe we will all learn to coexist together. Yeah, that's really cool. And I'm also like that. I'm a huge optimist in people. Me too. I think, um, I think what we see online is not really reality of our everyday it's lives. Not. Thank God. No. <laughs> oh my God. Can yeah. you imagine? We'd be living in fucking like South Park, dude. <laughs> yeah. yeah. But like, seriously, how boring would TikTok be without these woke people? No, it's so true, it. dude. I fucking I live it. for that shit. <laughs> I go on limbs of TikTok every fucking day just to laugh. Because I'm like, that's yeah. my comedy, dude. <laughs> it's, it's always top of my feed on Twitter Me now. Too. Me <laughs> too. I fucking love it. I fucking love it, it's dude. Like, I'm like, I don't have to do the work. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's awesome, dude. Uh, right um, on. Thank you for having me on. I appreciate no, it. No, thank you so much. And is there anything um, you want to promote or tell people about? Oh, well, anyone can reach me if you want to send me hate mail or you want to <laughs> tell me to die. You can reach me at, <laughs> I'm, I have buckangel.com. I have my Instagram is buckangel. My Twitter is buckangel. I have Facebook, buckangel official. Um, I'm on TikTok as Mr. Buckangel, but that that's just, you know, I don't, I don't particularly yeah, yeah. care for it. It's for kids, really. <laughs> yeah so, they keep banning it. me for mentioning the word sex so. i know so you have to put s-e-g-g i've been researching how to do it so yeah. don't put sex put seg everyone who because i researched all the sex educators and they all put mm. s-e-g-g so so you just have to manipulate the words yeah and, when, and you have to yeah. pick it out because they uh, that's right it'll pick up crazy. the sex that's right it's crazy yeah. It's actually crazy to me, but you should see, but they let so much insanity, but you can't talk about sex, but you could talk about taking off your tits at 13. Like what? <laughs> There's a conspiracy <laughs> that China's trying to destroy us with TikTok. <laughs> I just love it. The shit's getting better and better. Yeah, <laughs> sure. That's going to take over the world and destroy yeah, America. Like, Dude, that's a yeah, great I'm movie, like, actually. <laughs> <laughs> it's like the South Park episode with the Pokemon. I don't know if you remember it's that one. Best. Dude, oh my God, I swear. Someone's going to make a movie about TikTok. It's so good. <laughs> <I see that. laughs> right on. All right. Well, thanks so much. Thank you, well, my friend. Amazing. Yeah, and, um, you, thank you. I appreciate if, you. If people want to send hate mail, please send it to, but not me. That's right. I'm too sensitive. <laughs> I know nothing. Send it to me, I not you. Nothing about these topics. <laughs> You'll become suicidal. It'll be my fault, dude. <laughs> right on. <laughs> All right. Okay. Well, really, thanks thanks so much. It was awesome. Yeah. Have a great rest of your night or day. (laughs) I'll talk to you later. Bye.